On this edition of Winton Woods Warrior Supercast, the podcast that talks about what's going on in the Winton Woods School District, we want to take some time to talk about something that you're going to see on your March 17th ballot. So today I have with me in the studio Winton Woods Superintendent, Mr. Anthony Smith. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you again. Pleasure. There's a uh, Operation Levy, mm -hmm. and it's issue six. Yes. Um, and there are uh, some main reasons that we're going to talk about why that's important for the school district. But also, I want to just take a brief moment to say what's different about issue six versus people have seen a bond on there not that long ago. So I want to talk about how an operating levy is different from the bond that we just saw. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Very good question. And a lot of our uh, viewers, a lot of people in the community just have a difference and they just think that uh, leveraging taxes is taxes and they have a very diff dis distinct difference uh, a bond is basically the brick and mortar it's the building it's the building operation it's the facility the operation is how you run the organization it's the salaries it's the utilities it's the uh, groundskeeping it's the maintenance it's the food service it's all the amenities that help you run the organization and again, the bond was based on the brick and mortar. And that's important because you are required to use that bond for the buildings. The only thing that you can use the bond for, if there was additional dollars left over in a contingency, we could not use it for operational services. It can only be used for the buildings, the grounds, okay. and those things that are connected to what we told the taxpayers in the beginning. It is for building operations only. And that's important, I think, for taxpayers to know, is that you said that's what the money is going to be for, and they can be confident that's what the and money we, is for. And we are guaranteed that is what the money will only be used for. But it also brings us to issue six. Yes. Because beautiful buildings help keep operating costs down. Yes, they in do. In other ways. But you still have operating costs. Yes. And we're going to talk briefly about what some of the specific things that this is needed for. Yeah, well, one of the things that we did when we were in the community and uh, canvassing different communities, one of the things they said is we've heard about levies before, and we want to be very, very transparent to the community. Not only are we going to talk about the levy, but we're going to talk about what the specifics are. There are some districts, Dana, they don't talk about what the specifics are. Mm -hmm. So we want it to be very transparent. And the specifics are very, very scripted, and they are part of our uh, strategic plan. And the strategic plan says that we need to restore busing for high schoolers because we have high schoolers walking an inordinate amount of uh, miles in order to get to school. The other thing that we want to do is... Um, I look at my neighboring community not too far away, and it's in Lakota. And Lakota, they're fortunate that they have 18 school resource officers. And not because they have trouble in the schools, because what they want to do is they want to show a presence not to have trouble when there are things out in the community that may create a storm. If you look at all the different tragedies that have happened in you know schools, it really hasn't been what's in the school, it's outside of the school. And right now we're operating with one school resource officer. Vader Harris is an amazing guy, but he is one man. And uh, we'd like to really have, uh, we have two campuses. We're calling them campuses to create an, a um, collegiate uh, feel. So it would be uh, Wintonwoods North, Wintonwoods South. And Wintonwoods North, of course, is in uh, Forest Park. Wintonwoods South, is, of course, is in Green Hills. Our goal is to have two resource officers per building. These buildings are very large. You're talking about 245,000 square feet. A lot to manage, a lot to maintain. And again, it's not the presence of issues of what's happening in the school. Our, our students are great. They're good role models. Uh, they really r rely and practice on project-based learning. They have great interaction with each other. Uh, their correspondences with their teacher is authentic and wonderful. So it's the presence of threats outside of our community. And so that's one of the things that we wanted people to recognize. And of course, the preschool village, my concern about preschool, where we have to have the uh, expansion of it, we have kids on the waiting list. I do not want young people to be on the waiting list. These are some of our most vulnerable students that need to have early interventions and early opportunities to be educated. 
And we are excited because we have a five-star preschool rating, which is the highest rating in the state. So we know that parents want this rating, they want this opportunity, but when we have to close our doors and say we're full, that is really a deterrent to what we're trying to do. We're public servants and we want to make sure that all of our children can access a healthy, quality preschool at the right time. And all of these elements have been looked at over the years, but you're seeing, as you're, as you're put, working on new facilities, you're seeing an increase in enrollment that yes. we talked about before. Yes, there's so that also is the yeah. need for more resources. 4,000 plus students, and we anticipate, I've had the pleasure of working in another district, and every time you open a new school, the enrollment shoots up. And so we know that that's going to happen in our, in our community as well. Uh, parents are now putting information in saying they want to be part of an open enrollment process. And some people in the community may not op understand our open enrollment situation. We have a unique program, Project Based Learning, in conjunction with New Tech. And if we have such a unique program and there are no other surrounding districts that offer it, then in the event that our children have, have to move away, we want to make sure that they can kill, still come to Wynton Woods. So, Children don't have to control over where they move, right. but we do have control over how they get educated. And so that door is still open uh, once they apply for open enrollment. And transient behavior is part of who we are and what happens. We can't control that, but we can control the continuity and the sustainability of offering you the same quality education that you had before. And that kind of continuity makes a really big difference when you're talking about young kids going from year to year, if they're in a district, that's been engineered to build Absolutely. on itself. And when you move out of that, that, that becomes difficult trying to juggle what the new expectations yeah, are. Trying to, to make the to adjustments, that, yeah. trying to make the adjustments to having a project learn, uh, based learning experience because we want our kids to be very articulate, very confident. Parents have told us over and over, my child has the confidence that they never had before. And it's not a, a group of teachers standing up lecturing all day. It's kids being engaged with other students, working on projects, engineering ideas, come up with concepts. And these are real world issues that they're trying to follow or, or solve, excuse me, but in conjunction with the state standards. They meet the Ohio uh, state standards. So there's, it's not just a nebulous pack of instructional strategies. They are connected to the state standards. Absolutely. So there are four, just to make sure that listeners are, are hearing this, there are four very specific things we're talking about for issue six. This isn't a generic, no. it's for the kids kind of appeal. We're talking specifically about busing, yes. uh, which is really a safety thing. We hear Total every day safety. about something that's, that Absolutely. happens because someone was trying to walk to school. Uh, we're talking about school safety and just having a minimum of enough resource officers on campuses. Uh, we're talking about making the preschool village accessible to everyone who wants to be part of it. Everyone, every young person in this community deserves to be part of this village. And then, of course, the needs that happen when enrollment goes up. Yes. Um, and we've talked about that on other programs, is that that affects how much technology you have available. That affects totally. how many teachers you need. That affects how much of everything that you need in every classroom. So you have to be ready for that. Yeah, we, we don't really want to, ha we have a great relationship with our teachers, and we want to keep that relationship. Yeah. But we don't want to overburden them having 30, 35 kids to a class when we want to have a, a more relaxed ratio of 20 to 22. You start having 30, 35 kids, any teacher can tell you that burnout is more, more significant than ever. I actually got a moment to talk to the principal of the Wintonwood City School District's preschool, um, Elizabeth Stiles, uh, who came in to talk to me a little bit about the importance of what preschool offers students and how it gets them ready to be successful in kindergarten. So um, I want to take a minute to hear what she had to say uh, before we go any further. Okay, very good. That's important, I think, to say, and I know we've done programs about the preschools before and talked about that, um, but when we look at the big picture of funding, sometimes it's really easy to focus on shiny high school things. 
Uh, but really so much of that foundation is laid in early childhood that we need to make sure we don't forget that. Yes. <laughs> um, so tell me what specific kinds of things uh, we're talking about needing this funding to support. Okay. Well, mostly it's for the expansion of the preschool itself and for the operating of that preschool. So right now we have five classrooms and we're serving about about 100 children that go across two grade levels. So that's roughly 50 children per grade level. And when our district is serving about 300 children per grade level, we're barely touching the surface of that. So the expansion of the village would be uh, making it large enough and having enough classrooms and services for all of the children and all of the families in our school district that would like to access it. That's important because the student to teacher ratio is something that every parent knows about and looks for, mm -hmm. um, but especially with preschoolers. Right. Preschoolers really need more individual one-on-one -on -one or smaller group mm -hmm. interaction, which means you need staff and space to sustain that. <laughs> yes. Um, and I, I think that's just, that's one of those things that, and you're seeing the results of watching kids graduate from your preschool now and yes. how they perform in kindergarten versus kids that didn't have that opportunity, uh, which is why it's really important to make sure that more kids get that opportunity. Yes. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for coming in to make sure we got to talk about this issue that we're going to see very soon on the ballot. That's March 17th. Mm -hmm. um, voters can go to the Hamilton County Board of Elections site to see if they're registered and to see where they should vote. It's uh, too late to register for this particular election, but if you're not sure and you think, I think I registered before, I don't remember, you can go to the Hamilton County Board of Elections site and you can just type in a few things and find out if you're registered. You can look at a sample of your ballot. Um, you can go completely ready, no surprises, and find out what your polling place is. You can find all, all that ahead of time online. And it's important to find out because this will only be successful if all the people who are involved in the Winton Wood School Districts go to the polls on March 17th and support it. Absolutely. Uh, our listeners may be receiving a um, nice handwritten postcard. Uh, we've done over 5,000 handwritten postcards to our families uh, from administrators, from teachers, letting them know the importance of this particular levy. And if people are interested on March 6th, March 13th, and of course, March 17th, we'll be out at the uh, corner of Waycross and Winton uh, for a honk and wave, just saying, hey, consider sp supporting Issue 6. That's great. So if folks want to help you with that, they can, they can join in that. Yes, they can. Um, also, it, I always tell folks, go to the Winton Woods website, mm -hmm. www.wintonwoods.org, and it is full of information of events that are coming up, um, exciting things that have happened. There are renderings of the new buildings and Absolutely. updated photos. The thing I saw this morning was the learning stair side Incredible. by side with this, looking at the structure coming Incredible. into being. So, so that's exciting. So definitely look at the website. That's There's a lot of information on there. And if anybody has, has questions, you can contact the superintendent and yes. the other people in the district. All that information is on the website if you have questions to beyond this program. We've just hit things very briefly, mm -hmm. uh, but if folks want to know more, they can definitely come. But I've had the pleasure of visiting churches to talk about the levy. I've had coffees and teas with people in the community, and if people want to have a chance to have a conversation with me, superintendent, what's the difference between a bond and a levy? Superintendent, tell me about the particulars about this particular levy. Superintendent, what issue? Uh, what's the date, what's the time, what's the event, how do we get involved, how do we help, how do we support it? And there have been some conversations, Dana, where people have talked about, uh, Superintendent, what will be cut if this doesn't pass? We're so positive about the interaction with our community that we don't talk about cuts, we talk about growth. That's a really interesting thing to say because uh, a lot of times when school districts are looking at levy, instead of telling you what it needs to support, they're kind of telling you what's not going to be there. That is actually it's, counterintuitive it's kind of, of what we want to do. Yes. Yeah. And we don't want to scare the public. We're just saying, here are the facts. 
hear all the pieces. Our message is consistent no matter what room we're in, no matter what news station we're on, no matter what the variables are. And again, we don't talk about how to get rid of services, services, excuse me, we talk about the opportunities that we will uh, present to the community for the future. Do you know, um, and I, I know we didn't bring in with us uh, notes, but do you know how much we're looking at uh, for the average person and all that sort of yeah, thing? Yeah, the average homeowner of a $100,000 uh, value of property, it would cost them $20 a month, okay. $20 a month, which okay. might be 60 plus cents a day, something okay. like that. And you can't even call it a cup of coffee anymore because I don't know. I mean, even Speedway coffee is more than that. So, <laughs> um, it's not bad, but it's more than that. Yes. So that's that's an important. That's one of the questions I think people will be asking, Absolutely. and it's important to know. Watching Winton Woods improve so much year to year, and the years that we've been involved as Waycross covering things in the district, um, it's it's exciting to see the district be so transparent and specific and say we need this for very specific things right. um, this because is we don't asking. want we don't want anyone to get to the polls and ask a question what is this for mm -hmm. we want that you to already have that information and be very very open that you know if you want to have a deeper dive and say okay tell me more about the preschool village I can tell me about enrollment tell me about transportation tell me about safety I can take care of all those factors one of the things that's going to be very different to the community because we're taking our middle school and it's merging with our high school. It'll be a nice, great facility, but it will actually confuse people uh, with our current busing situation that if there are siblings in a household and one is in seventh and one is in tenth, that bus will pick the seventh grader up, but the tenth grader cannot ride that bus. Uh, the we, way it is now. Yes. Yeah. And so we want to make sure we fix that variable before they're in the same building because parents will be very, very upset and wonder, what, what is your instructional strategy to help my child get to school? Yeah. So we want to take care of that yeah. right now, well in, in advance. You need to get them there safely and on time before you can imp implement any of these really totally. great programs. Yes, ma'am. So correct. that seems like a really good yes. place to start. Yeah. But parents would be very, very concerned about the bus passing my child because I can tell you our office will be flooded with calls. And if I was a parent in the same situation, I would be calling. The bus just went right past my yeah. house. You picked up my 13-year-old, but not my 16-year-old. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. A so this good is one of those preven preventive measures that yeah. we're trying to put in place well before it has to That's actually go live. Great to know that these are the kind of details that are getting looked at ahead of time, so that when the new building is open, we can just see it smoothly absolutely. open. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm excited to be there and go film what's happening in the new um, facility. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Well, thank you very much. I'll remind people again, March 17th go to the Hamilton County Board of Election website to find out if you're registered and where you vote and what your ballot's gonna look like. And for everything Winton Woods that you ever want to know, go to www.wintonwoods.org and you can find out just about anything you ever wanted to know about the Winton Woods City School District. Thank you so much. Thank you.